the interesting stat that I picked up on uh, just six clean sheets on the road this season for Buxton but they have failed to score on only six occasions on their travels that in 22 matches so that's why I think you know commentators curse but I think we will see goals today yeah well, Hereford concede a lot of goals don't they they're, they're quite often wide open it's, it's a case of score more than you concede it on lots of occasions especially against the the good the better sides in this division I think it's against the better sides Hereford need to look at really and look at ways to improve over the summer and how they can secure their side because they're, they're, the, t- the teams in the top seven eight and them currently that Hereford have struggled against yeah Hereford ha- actually have won 17 matches at Edgar Street in all competitions this season only the likes really of Gate said from the division above Gillingham, the Football League side, uh, have beaten Hereford here. Obviously, heavy defeats uh, along the way. South Shields, I remember, and Scunthorpe. But realistically, Hereford have entertained the supporters this season, and that's why here we are at the business end of the season, and there's still a very, very good crowd assembled, hoping that Hereford can stay on track with a victory. We'll have to wait and see. A ball at the feet of Jordan Lydon to get us underway. Hereford will be kicking from right to left up the slope towards the Black Friar Street end. The referee, referee hasn't come too far. Ashley Clark from the West Midlands just checking with his two assistants to his left and right and gets the game then underway. A, a vital, vital game for Hereford as the ball spread it out to a keki on that right flank. He's already making inroads into the Buxton defence. Layoff from Bayboss quick start from Hereford here, Skinner to Lydon and now it's getting a bit congested on the far side and Ben Adducci comes back to concede a throw in, which Hereford take instantly, ball now at the feet of Hawkins just the one change for Hereford following their victory over Farsi Celtic here in their last game with Lawson Darth coming in after signing from Banbury be interested to see how he gets on today. Ball out to Skinner underneath the clock on the far right hand side of the pitch into Leiden. Bit of movement there now from Dath. Dath to Hudson. Hereford now switch it to the left hand side for Obaday. Obaday on to Hudson. Can he get there first? Cuts it across, but it's just gone behind. Sort of curled out and then back onto the pitch, but it is a goal kick. But applause for a decent start from Hereford. They are on the front foot, Ben. Yeah, it's that sort of forward play, Dar finding the run of Hudson and, and then just um, the overlap play. I think that's what Hereford have really, really exploited Farsley in the last home game. They could not deal with the overlapping runs of Okeke and Obadei for sure. So, goal kick for Petrovic to take the goalkeeper. He's cleaning the bottom of his boots, so he really shouldn't get We've got muddy yet, but there we are. In fact, the pitch looks in really good condition as Petrovic takes the goal kick up into the Hereford half. Ball is attacked by Cameron with a powerful header. Out to the far side for Okeke, who's got pace to burn down that far side and still going up into the penalty area. Has taken it too far. Babos claims a corner, but it is a goal kick. But already you can see the threat from Hereford down the wings. Yeah, it's, the, it's both sides, isn't it? Okeke, I think he's been excellent since he's come in from Stockport on loan. He's um, really added a different dimension, and with Cissé being out injured for, for quite a while, he's he's been essential. Looks like Darth is playing behind Leiden in the central midfield. 31 years of age. For those Hereford supporters who are not too familiar with his background, he's played all the way from the championship level down to National League North so plenty of experience there and see how he performs on his Hereford debut this afternoon there he is with a header to the near side up goes Hudson is that a foul on Hudson no says the referee I think and gives a throw in. I think it has been that holding midfielder that Hereford have missed. I think Leiden's played that that job well when he's been fit, but it's been when he's been out that Hereford have gone on runs where they've just been especially away from home. They've they're opened up so easily. I think Tom Pugh is probably the pick of the Hereford central midfield this season, and he came in on loan from Scunthorpe, of course. Yeah, he did, and um, Amazi Arcuyar came in, didn't he, from from York, and now he's gone back and scored an absolute screamer for York. He didn't look interested at Edgar Street at all, did he? It's a strange one, that, given his previous record with Josh Gowling. 
at Hereford. And here we are on BBC Hereford and Worcester. Three and a half minutes gone. Hereford nil, Buxton nil. Hereford get the ball into the Buxton half. It's headed forward by McCourt into the centre circle. Little run here from Girolami. As that's come back to the halfway line. Hereford with a press on here. Ball at the feet of Luke Shields. Challenged by Phillips. Has to put the back pass to the goalkeeper. It's under a bit of pressure here from Phillips. And has cleared, but not too positively. And Darth got a touch to it, but it's ricocheted forward. De Girolami. He's got a player out on the right-hand side here. It's Motley Henry on loan from South Shields. Getting the ball down this right-hand touchline. Adrucci, another lone player in from Bolton Wanderers. So certainly Buxton uh, ringing the changes today. As I say, six changes to their starting lineup following that 4 1 defeat. But they've got an attacking throw level with the box on this right hand side as they uh, attack the meadow end with the assembled Hereford spectators behind it. Cross from the court in and a header. Was that an offside flag? Yes, it was. Offside flag, it wouldn't have counted. Goal kick. Kidderminster Harriers a goal up in their game at Chesterfield. So a flying start for the Harriers and just what they needed in that one. Here at Edgar Street in bright sunshine coming up to the five minute mark. It's still Hereford nil, Buxton nil. Curtis Pond in a sort of fluorescent orange goalkeeper's kit today. And he takes the kick now, straight down the middle looking for Phillips. Challenging there is Josh Granite. Hereford pick it up in midfield. Out now to Hudson on the left. Floated ball down the left flank. And Obaday has got onto it, into the penalty area. Goes to the byline. Tries to cut it back, but I think that ball's gone out of play. It certainly has. And that will be a goal kick. Obaday claiming that he was pushed. And I think the referee's given an indirect free kick here, Ben. Yeah, it's a corner, isn't he? Give him the corner, I think. I think he realised it came off a defender. Yes, yeah, so it's questionable who got the last touch, but yeah, corner's given. Six minute mark then, Hereford corner on this near side, the Hereford left. So Jordan Lydon with the responsibility of the corner kicks on this near side. To Baybos, back with Lydon. Fiercely driven into the area, Obaday is back to goal though. Baybos tries a curler and that's blocked and hacked clear by Josh Granite. And Hereford can pick it up again up just over the halfway line in the Buxton half. Crossfield pass from Hudson. Seeking out a, a Keki, but he's come in from that right hand touch line, so it will drift out of play for a Buxton throw in. Slightly worrying by Hereford a minute ago when Jake Wright was just left completely unmarked inside the box. I know he's played, he, the offside flag went up, but you can't always rely on that in this league. And he, he headed it well wide in the end, but he was in a, such a good position, and Hereford didn't just completely miss him. Yeah, obviously full focused on their attacking duties today. As you say, they need to remain focused for the entire 90 minutes. And it's certainly switched off a little bit there, albeit that there was an offside flag. Buxton have the ball up to the halfway line on the left-hand side. Jack McCourt has cried for the ball in midfield. He's received it now, but going backwards towards his defenders and Shields has given the ball straight here to Darth out now to Obaday Hereford attack down the left thought about an early cross but it's now with Lawson Darth back to Obaday on the Hereford left Hudson's joining in as well but Obaday has kept the ball at his feet Lydon keeps Hereford going but the ball's back on the halfway line now back to in fact to Curtis Pond so Hereford will have to restart from the Centre of defence. Lydon comes back deep to collect. And lack of communication with Cameron, and the ball's gone out for a throw in. Well, I think, don't think. The referee uh, has stopped the game. As I think Hudson was tracking back before the throw in was taken, and he's been tripped off the ball, Ben. Yeah, it was Motley Henry, wasn't it? And Hudson, I think Motley Henry made a run and kind of collided into Hudson. I don't think. I don't, there, was, there was no intent behind it. And certainly, uh, both sets of players are uh, confused a little bit by maybe the referee's calling of these decisions. We had a, a, co a corner awarded a few seconds ago that could have gone either way. 
And now the referee's just having a word with both Hudson and uh, Motley Henry. No cards, and it will finally be the throw-in for Buxton, 10 yards inside the Hereford half. Eight and a half minutes gone at Edgar Street. Still Hereford nil, Buxton nil. Crossfield pass by Girolami. Far side of the field, he's got too much on it. And that will uh, drift down the slope for a Hereford goal kick. Bright, bright sunshine. Lots of supporters shielding their eyes at the uh, meadow end. We're having a many pleasant afternoons like this at Edgar Street. It's been freezing half the time, isn't it? It's a good, good crowd. I'm, I would imagine this is going to be over 3,000, you know. <laughs> And what you make of it then? Yeah, I think the um, just the way Hereford have gone about their football this season, it's attractive, it's entertaining, isn't it? We've not had many poor performances and, a, and, and lots of wins. Here's Baybos. Baybos on now towards Phillips. Phillips should get there first. Ten yards outside the penalty area on the left. Hereford have got Obede joining in. Edge of the penalty area now. A little step over, right foot shot blocked. It'll ricochet to Hudson. Hereford still on the attack. Hudson just outside the penalty area. Takes on the uh, Motley Henry. Cross coming in, and the goalkeeper's grabbed it at the near post. A fierce cross, but uh, Petrovic did well to hang on to it. There's been goals. Brackley won Tamworth nil. Curzon Ashton won at South Shields nil. Kings Lynn are two up at home to Scarborough. It's Russell won at Boston nil. So on the evidence of those matches so far, Ben, uh, those teams above Hereford at the minute are not taking advantage. Yeah, it's all about Hereford, isn't it? Winning these next two games, I think. If Hereford can win this today and win at Banbury, I think then they'll start looking. Hawkins let the ball bounce, but he has recovered and has drifted out to the left-back position with the ball and then concedes the throw-in deep in Hereford's territory. Slight indecision, I thought, from Hawkins there initially, but he recovered. It was the bounce of the ball. It was an awkward bounce for Hawkins to try and... He did it. He did well to just use the experience to get away. Baybos with the ball. Midway inside his own half. Lifts it for the run of Phillips, but central defender Granit's right underneath that. The draw ball drops to Obede. Obede down to Leiden. Got a bit of space in the centre circle. Out now to Skinner. He's joined in from right back. He works his way down the right. He's got a Keki available, but Skinner with a cross in. Phillips! Obede! Well... He really didn't get any purchase in the header. It could have been 1-0 Hereford after 11 minutes. The ball came across to Obede and he didn't test the keeper then. He got put up by Phillips was the chance, wasn't it? Phillips had the header, header down, went into the path of Obede. He, he should have scored really, but couldn't get a shot, couldn't get enough on it. And the goalkeeper was gratefully saved. But yeah, big chance for, for Hereford. Yeah, it was a weak header, wasn't it, really? Perhaps it came to him quicker than he was expecting, uh, but just couldn't get the ball past Petrovic with any conviction whatsoever. And so it's still Hereford nil, Buxton nil. But again, positive from Hereford, they are opening up Buxton in the early stages of this match, 12 minutes on the clock so far. It's the big first chance of the game, isn't it? There's um, no chances, no team has had a better chance than that one. Babos combining with Akeki down the Hereford right. Babos back on the ball. Inside now to Lawson Darth. Darth has got options to his left. On the overlap is Hudson. Hudson with an early cross in. Poked away over the shoulder clearance by Brogan. On the attack though is Skinner for Hereford approaching the penalty area. He's still with it now. He's got Akeki available. Akeki chips one to the far post. Again, Ob Obide wasn't the quickest to react. It's still in... The final third is Lewis Hudson, Hereford's left back. Slides the ball inside, Darth across field. Good looking ball to Skinner, but acres of space now. Down the right hand side for Akeki. This is where Hereford could exploit the Buxton defence. Early cross coming over. Motley Henry, not the best attempted header away, and Lawson Darth collects it to Obidei. Ten yards outside the penalty area on the left hand side. Hudson on the overlap. Hudson in, up goes Akeki, but he can't stretch the head to it. Still Hereford on the attack. Skinner to Akeki, he's got his back to goal, turning his man. Left-footed shot, no real purchase on the shot, though. And it's slammed away by the Bucks' rear guard. And Cameron safely with a back pass at the other end of the pitch. So, a little bit of momentum with Hereford so far, Ben, but nil-nil. 
Yeah, Kake with them with a chance, and he couldn't quite get enough perch, enough on the header to send it goalwards. But yeah, good momentum by Hereford building in the last five minutes or so. Ball in the Hereford half. Here's Lawson Dart doing a bit of defensive work. Over the shoulder, ball forward up in the air. Hereford supporters claim a free kick, and finally the referee's given it for a foul on Leiden. Just while Spurs are breaking play, I can tell you it was actually Hemmings who scored for Kidding Mr. Harriers after six minutes up there at Chesterfield. Can they blow the final whistle now? <laughs> well, I'm sure that's what Harriers fans are I'm thinking, probably. Well, yes. Take that all day long, wouldn't you, really? It's the same against Altrincham, isn't it? Well, they played really well the first half against Altrincham, to be fair. They did deserve to be a couple of goals up at half time, but if you don't take the chances. You're not missing any football here because yeah. Jordan Lyon's still sitting down. He had a bang in the back of the head by the look of it from here, but. I think Keith Hereford will be pleased with their start, but uh, they've created a couple of good chances, but you've got to score in your good spells, as they say. You yeah, have indeed. Lydon's got to his feet, but he's coming off near side. I think it's just temporarily. Hudson and Obiday coming across near side to the technical area to have a quick conversation with Rooney and Cadiz. I think Lydon is OK to come back on, but temporarily Hereford down to ten men. they got the free kick, and goalkeeper Curtis Pond will take straight towards Obede rises the ball dropped Hudson Hudson gets it through to Obede good quick feet from Obede trying one little trick too many there though he's crowded out but it has ricocheted to Hudson Hudson into the box and it's pumped away by Sean Etaluku a young 20 year old on loan from Barrow it's normally a uh, in a wing position there but he was helping his defence but Hereford have recovered possession in the centre circle here's Leiden Leiden now to Cameron got angle diagonal to Hudson back with uh, Cameron is under pressure here pushed by Jake Wright and that's a Hereford free kick getting on with it is Leiden to Hawkins freedom of the park up towards the halfway line Drifted ball to the feet of Skinner, but he's facing his own goal here. And gets the back pass going and pumped forward by Pond. Dath tries to make something out of it in the centre circle, but possession with Buxton. McCourt with a little angled ball out to the left hand side for Etaluku. That's what, what he's pace he's got. He's got past Skinner here into the area, cuts it back, but Nathan Cameron with a timely interception just when he thought Buxton were going to get an effort on target. Cameron was in the right place at the right time at the other end. Phillips has strayed into an offside position and the flag has gone up. So a bit of a threat there. Signs bend down the left that uh, Sean Etaluku has got the pace to take on Skinner. Yeah, he did well then, Etaluku, didn't he? He looks good on the ball, put the ball, put it into a dangerous position. Phillips alive and lied to Obede, but the flag's gone up against the Hereford winger and that will be a Buxton free kick being played at quite a frenetic pace isn't it? Yeah I think Buxton have got a, after their run they've got something to prove today and Hereford obviously going for a vital win and so that both teams are really looking to impose themselves on the game Buxton beat Hereford 2-1 up at Silverlands back in November slightly below average gate in that one 532 but it was it was absolutely freezing, as I remember. Hereford win a defensive header. Ball will drop to Babos. And he's shanked a ball into the crowd. That's not the best from Babos, who's uh, signed a new contract with Hereford to for next season. So that's ending a bit of speculation there, Ben. Yeah, he's done well, hasn't he, this season, Babos? He's been one of the, the first net t names you put on the team sheet, really. And he's... Um, he hasn't had many bad performances, really. Skinner with a partial clearance, but it's been picked off by Max Hunt down that left-hand side. Crossfield diagonal to Motley Henry. Takes it on his chest and then tries to nutmeg Obide, who holds firm. And that's, I think that's really obstruction by Obide. Free kick's been given to uh, Buxton. Looks a bit half of one, half a dozen in the other. Is it? Well, I did put his body in the way, so I, I, I actually agree with the referee there. I think it would, should be a free kick for Buxton. 
and uh, he's given it. So it's a couple of yards in from the right-hand touchline as Buxton attack the uh, meadow end of this, uh, I have to say, traditional football ground with a whole bank of terracing behind that goal. Jack McCourt will take this kick. Big black and white checkered flag I can see behind the, the goal to which Buxton will be attacking. So McCourt with the right foot into the near post. Hereford deal with it and Babos clears. Hoisted back in there by Brogan but straight at Hereford keeper Curtis Pond who's urged to get on with it quickly and Akeki can't control it. That'll be a throw in for Buxton on the halfway line. That was sort of muted applause for Pond for trying to release it quickly. Yeah, I think Pond generally does try and release it quick, and how the fans want to see Hereford really get forward in numbers and really try and. And I think Hereford are, are, are best when they're on the counter attack and they catch teams bombing forward. Here's Motley Henry with a cross in, up goes right. And there's a foul on Kyle Hawkins. I don't think there's much doubt about that. Cameron's having a right go at the referee because he feels that Jake Wright was up with his elbows outstretched and the referee is going to have a word with the Buxton number seven with Hankins getting back to his feet in the six yard box 20 minute mark on BBC Hereford and Worcester good to have you along wherever you are in the in the world it remains Hereford nil Buxton nil and referee Ashley Clark is giving the well the last rights as it were to Jake Wright the last warning any more of that and he'll get a yellow card but no yellow produced on that occasion Ben are you surprised by that I, don't, I think it's the inconsistency that winds players and managers up one one weekend the referee goes straight to his pocket and it's a, it's a yellow card for, for that, that sort of foul for any, any player and the next the referee lets them go and you don't really know what the referee's decision on a certain day is going to be I think it's the fact that he spoke to him for so long and didn't book him was the most surprising thing. Either you let it go and get on with the game, or you book him. And Wright and Hankins tang me again. This time, free kick's been given, I think. Actually, the assistant referee gave that. Now, Buxton have kicked the ball away to stop Hereford taking a quick free kick. Crowd getting agitated in the main grandstand immediately above that. They could see what the... Uh, Buxton player was, was doing well on another day that's a booking for blocking a free kick we've seen that week after week given as a, a straight to a yellow card so you don't really know what the referee's going to do the referee was saying they weren't taking it from the right place so that's the only reason he got away with that I think so Hereford take the kick up to Obede as he pushed in the back play continuing Hudson to Lydon Lydon to Babos trying to turn his man but it's flicked up in the air by Motley Henry into the Hereford half Hawkins towering above Jake Wright with a purposeful header. Lawson Darth now out to Akeki, hugging the right-hand touchline. He's working his way inside now on that far side of the field as we look. On the overlap is Skinner. Skinner with a low cross in. Phillips tried a little back heel. Babos off the line by the keeper's feet. Babos shot on target, but perhaps not enough power behind it to beat the keeper. Still nil-nil. Midway point of the first half. Obede, Babos, Babos to Hudson. Lovely football. Back with Babos. Babos dribbling in the area. Gets to the byline. That's going to be a corner. Really good football from Hereford there. Intricate first time football. Quick feet into the box and they forced a corner. Should have scored. Babos really should have scored there. Corner it is. And it'll be Babos this time with the corner on the Hereford left. So it should be an in-swinger. Leiden's gone to the near post. Ball floated into the box. Goalkeeper's punched it at pace. It's come out to Akeki. Akeki goes for goal and it's blocked. Haukins stays forward. Good footwork from Haukins. Surprisingly so. Into Akeki. Gets to the byline. Hereford still on the attack. Everybody back for Buxton. Now the referee has stopped the game for a so-called head injury. I'm not sure what to make of this as Hereford were mounting a concerted attack of the referee has stopped the game with a player flat on his back just outside the box. It could look like the, referee, the player went down injured and then when he saw Her when he noticed Hereford were playing on he grabbed his head 
and the referee obviously stops the game saying it's a head injury he needs to stop it whether it's actual head injury or not is the, is probably the issue and uh, yeah footballers will find a way of bending the rules as far as they can that's all I'm going to say about it it was ever thus Keith back in the 70s they were doing the same thing as you and I both remember really but yeah I mean Hereford good spell of pressure a tactical head injury perhaps you could call that but I think the referee's got to keep a grip on this because this could quite cheerfully boil over if he's not careful third goal for Kings Lynn it's Kings Lynn 3 Scarborough nil. Scarborough have blown up in 2024 in many ways Rushall 1 Boston nil. Spennymoor nil. Farsley Celtic 1 that's another surprising scoreline Curzon National are beating South Shields by a goal to nil. it's now uh, Brackley Town at 2 Townworth nil. Chorley still nil nil with Blythe Spartans in theory mathematically Chorley could still catch Tamworth at the top of the table. I just saw it in the uh, National League. In addition to Kidderminster they're still winning 1-0 in their game at Chesterfield. Sides in and around it at the bottom. Boreham Wood are getting an absolute stuffing at South End. It's South End 3, Boreham Wood nil after 24 minutes. That's not going horribly wrong for them. And also down towards the bottom of the table. Woking are drawing. Dorking Wanderers who are down there with Harris. They are losing at Aldershot Town. So at the moment for Kidderminster it's looking pretty good. But as we all know, awfully long way to go. Back here at Edgar Street Live, 25th minute, and the, uh, following that injury, Hereford have got a bounce ball just outside the box on the right-hand side. So they are still packing the penalty area. I can see Obadei going into there now. The ball should be dropped at the feet of Jordan Lydon here. It is just outside the area. Now it's to the Keki. Right flank, the Keki cut, cutting inside. He's done well to beat his man. Tries to thread it through, left foot shot, oh. just over the bar. The youngster's first effort was blocked, but the follow-up, not far off target then. Yeah, he's done well, Okeke, hasn't he? The ball's kind of deflected off the defender, but straight back to his feet, and it's actually opened up because Buxton stopped, and thinking they'd cleared, stopped, dispossessed Okeke. They stopped play, um, creating the chance, and he, the goalkeeper's done well to get his, his fingertips to stop that just dipping below the crossbar so still nil nil here on BBC Hereford and Worcester 26 minutes now on the clock as we keep reminding everybody Hereford really need a victory to stay on the coattails of that uh, playoff bracket Buxton get it forward but Skinner closes the door getting ahead there of Andrici with the back header and Pond quickly throws the ball back to the Hereford right back who did so well after coming in from Radcliffe, Radcliffe Borough to the Hereford setup in the summer. Now Darth has picked the ball up just inside his own half. Runs now through. That's a thread a ball to Phillips who'd made an early run. Poor clearance from Hunt. Gets away with it. And Hunt again with the ball now in the left back position, slams it up in the air. Hereford let it run, and it's bounced once straight through to Hereford's keeper Pond. Pond to Hudson. Obide wanted the ball early down the left, instead it's with Lydon who's been battled out of it by Gerald Army into the area now for Jake Wright. Wright with attempted cross, good tackles coming in from Hereford. Then Lydon, uh, I think it's actually um, Hereford's left back Hudson who was tripped and now it's Jake Wright who stays on the ground and this is where the theatrics does get very annoying. But Jake Wright's only got himself to blame because he tried keeping hold of the ball while he was on the floor subsequently a melee sort of developed where the players are trying to get it away from Wright and now he's down claiming injury Well he wouldn't much be much good at Lucktonians would he really if that's, uh, <laughs> if that's a little melee there, if he was at the back end of a ruck there he'd be permanently on the pit on the ground I think because there wasn't a lot in that really it was a nice little back heel to try and get the ball away from him well he's, uh, he's two feet from the goal line yeah get well. him off the so get him over the goal line off the pit yeah <laughs> roll him <laughs> despite never mind how serious the injury might be Keith roll him off the pit <laughs> <laughs> so some sort of rolling device and any player that's too close roll him off the crowd tell you the reaction yeah he's think. getting uh, he's getting the bird from the meadow end isn't he really and understand you get a warm reception down there I'm sure 
Uh, yes, he's definitely getting a wall reception down there. I am morphing into uh, David Lloyd, the cricket commentator. Because, honestly, and one of my catchphrases is now is, get on with the game, <laughs> which is what he says a lot in cricket. The Victor Meldrew of cricket commentary, of <laughs> football commentary. Well, you can hear the crowd reaction. Yeah. They want to get on with it. They know boxing, it's a sporting game to a degree, isn't it? Dog, uh, free kick then. Pond takes towards Obadei on the Hereford left. Beaten in the air to it by Shields. Ball drops back into the Hereford half. Leiden is there though, hoisting it up in the air. Shields again with a header. And it's first time in the match really, it's got a bit uh, untidy, but the ball back with Pond. And quickly bowls the ball over arm to Skinner. Skinner ball on the deck. Little touch from Baybos. Back towards Skinner, but uh, Buxton player there, I think it was Andrucci coming back, got there first. And the ball's sent back to the Boston goalkeeper. Under pressure from Phillips. Has dealt with it. Out to Max Hunt. Again, Hereford with the press on. This time it was a keki who tried to get there. But now it's Josh Granite. Out to the far side. Good challenge. Well, I thought it was got the ball. And Skinner shows a lot of dissent to referee Ashley Clark, who has given Buck Buxton the free kick. Right on the halfway line. I think the one thing that surprised me so far about Buxton, Keith, is that they haven't used Etaluku a lot more because he's obviously got pace to burn down that left. He left. I mean, Skinner's a good player and he left him for dead earlier in this half. So just get the ball to him. I think they're obviously worried about a Keki and Skinner teaming up on that far side. And that's a woeful free kick from the halfway line by Buxton and it simply sailed into the meadow end crowd for a goal kick. Half an hour gone at Edgar Street on BBC Hereford and Worcester. It's still Hereford nil, Buxton nil. You're listening to live Vanarama National League North action on the BBC. Good to have you along. Full match commentary, hopefully on Wednesday for the rearranged boundary game and most certainly at Scunthorpe next Saturday. Ball over the top for Hereford. Obadei, cross cut it across, it's a corner. Had the pace there just to get ahead of Luke Shields, the Buxton captain. Drove to the byline and just couldn't quite cut it back early enough and it's a corner. Alex Babos has come across to take for Hereford. Hankins going in front of the goalkeeper, trying to put him off in the six-yard box. Cameron's at the far stick. Here comes the ball curled in and what's the referee giving a push on Petrovic? by Hawkins, you could almost see that coming and it's a free kick for the Bucks here at Edgar Street who have won 9 of their 21 away matches so not a bad away record 29 of their 55 points coming away from home it's not a bad track record at all it's the right thing to do though because Hawkins is probably a foot taller than the goalkeeper and I think in, in the second half towards the, shooting towards the meadow end if Hawkins managed to get above the goalkeeper and head it home it's a strong referee to rule out interestingly there the referee blew the whistle and really demonstrated to the goalkeeper that's your last time wasting opportunity we'll see if that actually uh, is the way of it but he was certainly referee trying to get the goalkeeper to get on with it anyway ball centre field Leiden getting it forward Good back header to the goalkeeper before Phillips could get really interested though. So Buxton has snuffed out the danger there with 14 minutes to go to half time. Still nil nil at Edgar Street. Petrovic, long kick deep into the Hereford half. Hackins comes across, right prods the ball into the path of Andrucci. And Andrew Alami, good save by Pond of the comfortable height in the end but it was curling away from the Hereford keeper and I think that would have dropped in at the far post Ben from uh, Diego Girolami it was definitely heading in he's caught it well hasn't he but it's probably but it didn't really have the power to challenge Pond too much he made it the Hereford goalkeeper made it look probably more spectacular save than it needed to be but it was a good stop still nil nil Obadiah is giving the ball away in centre field here's Jack McCourt Good ball forward, little dummy there from Jake Wright, but Skinner is alert and gets the back pass to Pond. His kick's not the best, and McCourt picks it up, left-hand side. Curling cross with the outside of the right foot, which Hereford deal with. And now a little bit of a space for Babos. 
Tried to get Phillips away down the line, and that's hooked away, but out. Hereford throw in right on the halfway line, still nil-nil. 12 minutes to go to the interval. Hereford have been very good in patches, haven't they, really? But it's the consistency yeah. they need more of. I mean, at times they've made Buxton look very ordinary. But Buxton have this threat on the counter. Well, as we just saw from that dual army effort, you know, Hereford aren't right on the money. They could easily conjure up a goal-scoring opportunity, albeit as a counter-attack. That's not the best pass from Jordan Lydon. He's upset with himself, and it's gone out for a throw-in on the halfway line. I think the opening 35 minutes probably tells you where Hereford are as a squad. The Bucks are a decent mid-table team, and they're, they're maybe slightly better than them, but they need to up the intensity to, to challenge the top half teams. Shields taking his time with the throw in, agitating the crowd, but he's dispatched it now. <coughs> McCourt with a bit of an up and under. Cameron rises at the back for Hereford. Here's a Keki. But, uh, Cameron to Darth. Now Skinner. Back pass to the keeper. Oof. Deary me, Adrici almost got there. And now Pond has sent Obidei away at the other end. Slams a ball across field to the feet of a, a Keki. A Keki now to Babos. Hereford on the, the attack at the other end of the pitch. Out to a Keki. Cutting in from that right hand touchline. He's still going. Babos into the box. Got players in and around him, one of which is Skinner. Four men wait for a cross. Ball into Babos has gone down. Crowd shout for penalty. I think Babos is making a meal of it. So I'm not surprised the referee is totally disinterested and it's still nil-nil. Hereford with possession now. Darth to Hankins. Halfway line Skinner. Now Babos. Drifted ball down the touchline for Akeki can stride out there. Cross early in. Right. Reach Obadei. And Buxton have closed the door emphatically there. And it's Max Brogan who switches play to the near side. Still in Buxton half. Motley Henry on loan from South Shields taking on Hudson. He's got past him. He's still going there. And Cameron thought about coming across with a sliding tackle. But in the end, it's Cameron's block that concedes a corner for Buxton after 36 minutes. Chesterfield won and Kidder Mr. Harry has won. And Matt Preston own goal has uh, restored parity in that one. It is still parity here. Nil-nil, the scoreline at Edgar Street. Really is a must-win game, you feel, for Hereford if they're going to maintain hopes of a genuine playoff run at the end of this season. They've been in and around that position up to third, I think, at one stage a couple of months ago. But that postponement on Friday at Banbury has set them back. They're going to have, have a game in hand, but they need a victory today. Corner for Buxton, flashing across the area. Ball up in the air by Skinner. It's not away yet. But Obidei over the shoulder effort and oh what a terrible shot is out of the sand actually it's over the top of the meadow end by Josh Granite sorry by Max Hunt and the ball is in the car park it was a poor clearance by Obidei he was over his head he had no idea where he was going and he was inviting somebody to hit it on the volley just outside the penalty box thankfully on from a Hereford perspective Granite got it completely uh, Hunt got it completely wrong and the ball is flown over the bar. Is it? Foul by number five, Granite. Again, Hereford trying to take a free kick quickly. The referee saying no on it. Back a few yards. So I think Buxton are well aware of what Hereford tried to do on these free kicks and throw ins. Referee striding away the full ten yards. Girolami is standing right on the ball at the minute, so. Leiden on Obidei uh, protesting about uh, the way that Buxton is standing in front of the ball. And the referee really doesn't want the game to be played any pace, does he? He's kind of taking his time over every free kick has to be perfectly played, can't take any anything quick or just get on with it. Jake Wright's coming back to help out the Buxton defence here. Fairly central free kick, but a long way out. Babos with it, driven in, blocked. Hudson and uh, Babos getting a bit of a mix-up here, but they've come out with the ball somehow. Floated up in the air, cleared. Hudson tries to keep the ball alive on the near side. 
and it's going to be a Buxton throw in. And it's that man, Jake Wright, who's down again with an injury. He's been very unlucky, Jake Wright. He's got loads of knocks, hasn't he, in this first half? He must have about 50 bruises at this, at this rate. <laughs> throw in taken. Cameron wins. And he's gone down with a knock. And Jake Wright's left Jake one on Cameron. Again, he's, he's in the book. The first player to get a yellow card. What a surprise. I'm actually surprised it's taken 39 minutes for any booking. Not just Jake Wright. No, I think... Uh, the time-wasting element might be a factor in the second half if they go on like this, because the referees issued plenty of warnings there. The goalkeeper had a warning. A couple of other Bucks and players have had warnings as well. And Wright, I think he was a bit irked because he felt... I, I think it was accidental. I think he felt the hair of a player came down on his ankle. Uh, there was no malice until it just happened to land on his ankle, and I think he exacted little retribution. Cameron with the free kick, floated. Up goes Obede early, might drop here to Leiden, who attacks the penalty area. Leiden's going through here now, and it's the corner. Off Luke Shields, who really had to lunge in. Timely challenge, otherwise I, I feel that Leiden would have cut that back across the six-yard box. Very well-timed challenge there, well, you got that wrong, it was a penalty all day long. But the referee got it spot on, to be fair. A little bit of drizzle now, we've had sunshine since the three o'clock kick-off, but... A little bit of rain forward, six minutes to go to half time as Babos takes Hereford corner. Near post Leiden. Leiden to Hobbit. Hey! Wide of the target. Snatched it a little bit with the left foot. And that's gone behind and there's been a player booked here for Buxton for complaining about something. It's McCourt, who is the second Bucks player to go into the referee's notebook. I think that was open as much as too much as open as mouth as too much as there. I think um, that was nothing else in that, as far as I could see. Just descent, I think. So two yellow cards inside two minutes. But it's a goal kick snatched effort by Obede. And it's a decent volley. Got plenty of power behind it, but not the accuracy that he was looking for as a goal kick taken by Petrovic up into the Hereford half. Jake Wright's gone down again and it's the Hereford free kick and Jake Wright's like the pantomime villain here the referee's coming across for a deliberate foul on Hereford's left back Lewis Hudson it was Hudson who climbed over Jake Wright initially for the initial booking so maybe he's trying to get one back over on Hudson but now he's getting his, his definitely final warning. Yeah, he's going to be walking a very fine tightrope, you suspect, for the rest of this one. So, finally waved away by referee Ashley Clark, and it's a Hereford free kick from their own half. Cameron, it's too high for Obede. Firm header from the Shields. Back towards the halfway line is Lawson Duff. Towards Hankins, out comes Pond. Good kick from Curtis Pond. Out to the far side of the field, that's the Hereford right. Akeki has to bring it under control. He's taking on Etaluku on that far side and has one and an attacking throw in. So we've got three and a half minutes to go, plus I think there should be a lot of stoppage time at the end of the first half. Babos and Skinner combining. Another Hereford throw in. Skinner picks the ball up quickly, wants to get on with it. Need to have movement off the ball. Babos tries to provide it. Ball into the path of Babos. Babos lifts it in. Granite with the header. Only as far as Skinner. Hereford still on the attack here. Darth to Hudson over the top, but he's got too much on the ball. And it'll go out near the corner flag for a Buxton defensive throw in. Yeah, Obede just misread the pass of Darth, didn't he? He wanted to, Obede wanted to run inside and Darth wanted him out on the wing. So clock ticking down rapidly towards half time it's nil nil on BBC Hereford and Worcester Skinner takes the ball away from Andrucci partially cleared back in from Leiden down the middle which Shields gets to Hereford seemingly got a very good grip in midfield oh 
Oh, I hope she's gone down. A really, really bad challenge there. The referee has to take charge. He's given a yellow card. I thought he might have been a straight red. Ben, what did you make of it? Not a red. Very it's a Clyde. It's, 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 not a nasty, it's not a high. But it was the fact Rooney then went straight into the player's face and was getting involved. Now, the whole, the, all the benches are involved as well. I think it's the Giral Army who's got the yellow card after all of that. It looked, it just looked high to me. I don't know what uh, Trevor you think. What you made of that? I didn't think it was particularly high. I think Rooney would do very well to sit, uh, sit down. <laughs> well, those on the on the bench just need to stay out of that. Uh, the referee, to be fair, was there very quickly, and he had his yellow card out very quickly. So he'd made up his mind very, very early on that that was not going to be a red card. I think he probably got it right. To be fair, it looks. It looked very dramatic because it was a someone up in the air. He did, did go yeah. very hard, didn't yeah. he? Um, it was full force. It was the force of the challenge yeah. more than the, the position on Hudson. So, dual army, but a minute to go plus added time. First half here, Hudson, crossfield pass. Hooked away, referee says a foul by uh, Hankins. So, Buxton will take the time over this, calm everything down, I think, before the half-time interval but I like Lewis Hudson as a player he's a very good player that was an awful free kick it was nothing of well nothing in it at all was it really just in the mix wasn't it really without too much thought as you were saying Brackley 2 Tamworth nil. Alfreton are a goal up at Chester Chorley have doubled their lead at home to Blythe Spartans they lead 2 nil. it's still Curzon 1 South Shields nil. Kingston 3 up at home to Scarborough Towards the foot of the table, Peterborough nil, Gloucester City nil. It's Russian Olympic one, Boston nil. And we're going to have four added minutes here at Edgar Street. Spennymoor one, Farsi Celtic one, an equaliser for Spennymoor there in that one. Still goalless between Warrington and Darlington, Southport and Scunthorpe. We're pretty much up to date with scores in the National League North. Hereford have got themselves a defensive throw in in the right back position. We've just entered stoppage time then at the end of the first half a keki with a glancing header forward but that's been pounced upon by Buxton just ahead of the centre circle floated ball by Granite into the area here Girolami goal goal for Buxton right on half time Hereford at sixes and sevens at the back the ball dropped and there's Diego de Girolami swivelling with a left foot strike into the bottom corner the visitors are ahead with a smash and grab affair just ahead of half time Girolami's done well there hasn't he to control and, and to, to, he kept his call turned and fired into the net He's done, but the one moment we said Hereford are likely to fall asleep and the, they did, failed, failed to deal with the ball into the box and Girolami's taken full advantage they were looking for an offside that wasn't there. But the, the player who played it into Girolami, Arafat were looking across the line. They thought he was offside, and clearly he wasn't. I mean, impossible to tell from this angle, but the, to be fair, the assistant was bang up to, with play. It wasn't given, and uh, well, you summed it up perfectly, Keith. Smash and grab. So, Hereford, despite all their possession, it's going to be a 1 0 scoreline, you would have thought, to the visitors at half time. Ball out with Skinner. Skinner inside to Hankins. And Hankins to Cameron. So that's deflated the crowd inside Edgar Street, Ben. Bit of a shock the way things have gone. A Hereford attack through Oberday. And a powerful clearance by Granite into the seats here in the Merton Grandstand. Never was a player better named than Granite. And a great name for a de central defender, isn't it? Hereford retrieve the ball back in their own half. Would you imagine there the half-time team talk could be absolutely crucial there? Well, I think they've, they've, they've done enough, really, Hereford. They deserve to be ahead, and they deserve to be ahead, but they're always susceptible to falling asleep, and, and they've, they've been punished. For not for not taking their chances and then not them not paying full attention, and in the dying moments of this first half, we did say stay focused, didn't we? And Hereford had seemingly cut open there with a simple ball to the far post, knocked down there was Duvalade. Hereford attack now through a keki though, a keki into the box, sliding in, it's gone behind from Max Hunt, it's a corner. 
plenty of corner kicks for Hereford in the first half. It's still 1-0 Buxton. And that's what we need to see much, much more of. I mean, Keki skinned his man. Good early delivery. That deflected could have gone anywhere, but it could easily have gone into the net. But now, can they conjure something from this corner? Minimum of four minutes of added time. We've had three. As Hereford have a corner on the Hereford right. So Topi Obadave will take this. So it should be an in-swinger. Haukins up from the back. Cameron's there as well. It's into a khaki. Back with Obadave. Onto his left foot. Turns. Akeki's not offside. Akeki can get across in. Chips it in. It's down for Babos who shoots. Cameron's there. He's still with Lydon who curls it straight at the keeper. Just needed a bit more elevation with the shot. Tried a little dinked effort when either a powerful drive or a more lofted effort might have been a better choice. He's trying to pick his pick his spot, hasn't he, Lydon? He's just not connected enough with the ball and it's easy for the goalkeeper. Really should have put more power on it. At least two at the four post waiting, weren't they, really? Phillips was one. So I make it time up. Referee with a whistle in hand, and there it is. It's Buxton who lead at half-time. Whether they deserve it or not, supporters will make their own mind about that, but it is a smash-and-grab effort. Ball knocked down, Hereford failed to clear, really. No offside, and swivelling there was Girolami, who did well to swivel smartly on the ball, left foot shot into the corner to give Buxton a half-time lead. Plenty of opportunities for Hereford in that first half, Ben, but the simple matter is they didn't take any of them. Yeah, they, I think there's not much Paul Caddis can, can say to his players because they'll be ha he'll be happy with the majority of the performance just putting the ball in the back of the net. And I think he'll be looking at uh, Williams and Cowley to come on and, and maybe add some extra impetus in that forward line. Hereford have stretched things. They've looked useful with Obede down the left and Akeki on the right, but they need to somehow find the breakthrough. I think it's half-time up at Chesterfield. It is. We'll come back to you two gentlemen in just a short while. Well, let's pop to Chesterfield now. Half-time here in the National League. Dream start for Harriers, but I think Steve Miller all square at the break. It is indeed all square at the break. Harriers taking the lead after just five minutes. Great work from uh, Harriers. They forced the play out to the right-hand side where they won a long throw. It was flicked in by Oxley chamberlain to the uh, edge of the six-yard box. Reese McNally rising, getting the ball down. Harriers kept it alive, and when Hemming's shot took a deflection, off the Chesterfield defender, Ryan Brute was stranded and Harriers took the lead against the Vanarama National League champions. Harriers more than equipped themselves relatively well. Brown came close on 18 minutes before Morgan Smith uh, was uh, denied after excellent work from Oxford chamberlain who gained another long throw. But Harriers uh, were reliant on Christian Dibble making a couple of saves. He kept out Dovra and he uh, did even better. A little bit later to keep out a free kick from King. But on 31 minutes, Harriers were back on level terms. Bailey Hobson, Harriers fans will remember him wearing a Harriers shirt earlier in the season. Broke down the right-hand side, put a cross in that took a deflection. Matt Preston, in his uh, desperation to try and clear, could only slice it over uh, Christian Dibble into the back of the Harriers net. And that brought Chesterfield level and their uh, record goals tally equaled on 102 goals for a season. Harriers over equipped themselves well. Uh, to be fair, they're going to be working even harder second half, but they've got a decent result if they can hold it at the moment. Chesterfield won at Kidderminster Harriers won. 8,337 in the stadium here, 384 from Harriers. What an excellent support for the Harriers team. It is. Thank you very much in DC. That's a good following and a good sized crowd up there at Chesterfield. We welcome back listeners to 104, 104.6 FM and indeed those of you on DAP as well. With the news here at Edgar Street, it's Hereford nil, Buxton at one at half time. Quite how Hereford are trading in this game is beyond me. Uh, let's bring Keith Hall in briefly on that one. They created really good chances, didn't they? I mean, it's got shades of Kidderminster on Good Friday, this, because um, Hereford was by far the better side in the first half. Oh, fair play, it was a good finish by Buxton to put them in ahead, but how Hereford losing this? Well, simple matter is they didn't get the ball past the goalkeeper. He hasn't really had to make outstanding saves. Hereford sort of slicing their efforts and not getting them powerful enough at close range on a number of occasions and Obede is smashed one wide of the target when he really should have got a, an effort. And even before we got to the half-time interval, Cowley, after a bit of a mix-up in the Buxton defence from a corner, 
the ball fell to him and he, he tried to, I don't know whether it was an intricate little lob that he was trying, but he didn't get enough Leiden. power behind Leiden, it, Leiden, sorry, yeah. and, uh, you know, went straight into the goalkeeper's midriff when he, he could have um, shot powerfully or li- tried a little chip of some description. But uh, Hereford with opportunities, Babos has had a couple, Akeki has looked lively. I think I still think that's where Hereford can now get back into the game and that's using the flanks as they attack towards the meadow end. Yeah, downhill towards the meadow end in the second half. Thanks, Keith, for the time being. Let's go to Jubilee Stadium now. Eastern United against Malvern Town. This is Division 1 South of the Southern League. Half-time in this one, that comes from Steve Carley. Where it's Eastern United nil, Malvern Town 2 in the derby match. A game that both sides really need to win to pick up some form and perhaps push for the playoffs. Eastern have done the majority of the attacking, but they've not been able to do too much with it. And it's two goals in eight minutes that have given Malvern the lead. The first in the 28th minute, Jordan and Nier headed in from Harry Clark. He was one of five, uh, three changes that Malvern had made for this game. Then in the 36th minute, Bullock turned in a nice ball in from Watts. Possible shouts of handball in that, but the referee wasn't having any of it. So each of them at the other end, they've done most of the attacking, seen plenty of the ball, got the ball into the box, but they haven't really threatened Josh Bishop whatsoever, apart from a couple of efforts from Ethan Moran. Yellow cards have been shown to Mackenzie Lamb and Freddie Wilcox of Eastham and also to Jack Watts of Malvern. So half-time here, Eastham nil, Malvern 2. Elsewhere, Worcester City trail bottom of the table, Wantage Town in the Hellenic League by two goals to one. That's a bit of a surprise, well, very much a surprise considering Worcester's run. Dylan Hart put them ahead, but they trail at the break by two goals to one. Elsewhere in the Southern League Premier Division, Central, it is Redditch United nil, Stourbridge 1, and Bromsgrove Sporting 1, AFC Telford United 1, Hales Owen Town 0, Alchurch 0. Steve, thank you very much indeed. You're listening to a Bank Holiday Sports Special. It's two minutes to four. BBC Upload. BBC Upload. I'm Nina Dasgupta. And every week I'm here to help champion the best poetry, comedy and spoken word in Herefordshire and Worcestershire. So if that's you, show me what you're making right now. BBC.co.uk. Upload. And we could be featuring you. BBC Upload. BBC Upload. Nina Dasgupta. Join me showcasing the very best creatives from where we live. Thursday and Saturday nights from 6. Right here on BBC Hereford and Worcester. Right, uh, scores from around the country, starting off with a result in the Championship at lunchtime. Leicester City came from a goal down against Norwich City to win 3-1, which means Leicester are top of the Championship table. Uh, it was uh, Gabriel Sara put Norwich ahead on 20 minutes. Uh, Kin and Dewsbury Hall then levelled it up on 33. In the second half, Steffi Mavididi made it 2-1 Leicester on 61 minutes. Jamie Vardy, three minutes into added time, wrapped it up for the Foxes. They won by three goals to one. Half times elsewhere in the Championship, Birmingham City nil, Preston North End nil. Coventry City 1, Cardiff City 1, Middlesbrough 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0, an own goal there uh, giving uh, Middlesbrough the lead in that one. At home park, it's Plymouth in as near, a uh, home park Plymouth is a 0 0 at half time in what is as near as a derby game as they get really against Bristol City. Rotherham United 0, Millwall 0, Stoke City 0, Huddersfield Town 1 at half time there. Uh, Sunderland 0, Blackburn Rovers 2, Sammy Smodich with two more goals for Blackburn. He scored so many goals for them this season in the Championship. And it's goalers in the other two matches, Swansea City against Queen's Park Rangers and West Bromwich Albion against Watford. There are two evening kickoffs at 5.30 at Portman Road. That'll be a big game. That's second against fourth, Ipswich Town against Southampton. And then third place, Leeds United at 8 o'clock will take on Hull City, who are ninth in the table. Uh, Half times in League One: Blackpool nil, Wickham Wanderers nil, Bolton Wanderers two, Reading one, Bristol Rovers nil, Shrewsbury Town nil, Burton Albion one, Barnsley nil, Cambridge United one, Wigan Athletic nil, Carlisle United nil, Lincoln City one, Charlton Athletic nil, Stevenage nil, Cheltenham Town nil, Exeter City nil, Leighton Orient nil, Peterborough United two, Northampton Town one, Port Vale nil, Oxford United three. Fleetwood Town, nil. Very good first half there for Oxford. In League 2, a result from the early game, it finished Grimsby Town 1, Bradford City 1. 
Uh, Bradford equalising their three minutes into added time with a penalty at the end of the game from Richard Smallwood. Denver Hume of Grimsby sent off uh, a minute into added time. I can only assume those two events were linked, uh, but one apiece it finished anyway. Crew Alexandra, nil, Forest Green Rovers, three. Forest Green Rovers seemingly dead and buried. Uh, away at sixth place, Crew Alexandra. Forest Green at bottom, three up at the break. Harrogate Town nil, Gillingham one. It's Morecambe two, Barrow nil. Newport County nil, Crawley Town two. Uh, Crawley a goal up in the first minute in that one. Notts County one, MK Dons one. Stockport County, who are the leaders, nil. AFC Wimbledon nil. Sutton United one, Swindon Town nil. Sutton down amongst the dead men as well, so they could do hanging on to that. Tramia Rovers one, Colchester United one. Walsall 1, Salford City 0, Jamil Matt, former Harriers player with a goal for Walsall, uh, that's the latest there, and the Vanarama National League, Aldershot Town 1, Dorking Wanderers 0, Altrincham 1, Oldham Athletic 0, Chris Con Clark has scored a brace at Harriers on Friday, he scored again this afternoon, Barnet 1, relegated Oxford City 0, Bromley 0, Woking 1, uh, Chesterfield 1, Kidamissa Harriers 1, Dagenham and Redbridge 0, Ebsfleet United 0, Eastleigh 2, Maidenhead United 0, it's Rochdale 0, Hartlepool United 0, Southend United 3, Boreham Wood 0, and Wilson 0, Solihull Moors 0. In Vanarama North, Bishop Storford, who are pretty much down, if they're not already down, uh, they lead Banbury United there by a goal to 0 at half time. Brackley Town 2, the leaders Tamworth 0, Chester 0, Alfredton Town 1, Chorley 2, Blythe Spartans 0, Kirsten Ashton 1, South Shields 0, Hereford 0, Buxton 1, Kings Lynn Town 3, Scarborough Athletic 0, Peterborough Sports 0, Gloucester City 0, Russia Olympic 1, Boston United 0, Southport 0, Scunthorpe United 0, Spennymore Town 1, Farsley Celtic 1, and Warrington Town 0, Darlington 0. So those are your scores from around the country. Keith Hall is still alongside me. I was wondering, Keith, if we might see the chance of a half time change perhaps. Um, maybe the introduction, or maybe give it 10 minutes, the introduction. Jason Cowley up front what's your thought on that I don't think it'll be long before changes are made but given the way that Hereford had dictated uh, most of that first half I don't think he needs to panic in any way but a quick turnaround uh, you would have thought is necessary as Hereford kicked down the slope towards the meadow end they're going to get a lot of encouragement I imagine Jake Wright will be the subject of a, a lot of the verbals coming in uh, from the crowd he must be very close uh, to testing the referee's patience, if not the crowd's patience. Uh, but no, I wouldn't see, I wouldn't see changes at half time. Maybe give it, a, give it 10, 15 minutes until bringing the likes of Cowley on. Say Shearer possibly in midfield at some stage, Ben? Do you think? Yeah, I, I think the midfield battle is not the problem. I think. Um, Darf's done really well on his debut. I think they're controlling the midfield. It's just out wide, isn't it? They need to get the balls in the box. And then I think Cowley needs to come on. And, and really, I don't think Phillips has done enough for me up front on his own. And I think they need to change the forward line and just give Cowley and Williams another chance and make and give them a chance to make their impact. Because we know they were such a good player as they are. Yeah, I mean, Phillips hasn't had a lot of service, has he, really? But when it has fallen to him, it just hasn't dropped at the right time or the right place. Yeah, he's, he's done OK, hasn't he? But he's not really shun, shun out. And um, I think, yeah, I think Cowley and Williams are, are re thriving and ready to go. I think the indication there won't be a substitution in the, other than Adam Rooney, who's going to be part of the team talk in the dressing room. Hereford's other four substitutes are out on the field of play. So if they were likely to come on, uh, they'd be getting their last minute instructions. So uh, I think it'll be a while before the likes of Cissé, Cowley or Williams are introduced. And it's so, so important. I mean, obviously, because they're training the game is the main reason, but they've got to give the Herald fans something to shout about very early on in this half. Down the slope, as you say, Keith, towards the meadow end, they've really got to get the tails up. Yeah, the, the crowd got really boisterous, didn't they, with a few uh, dark arts on the show. The crowd were right on top uh, of matters, giving the referee a bit of the bird as well. So that sort of can encourage the opposition on occasions, but... I feel that, you know, if they maintain the decibel level, uh, then that will encourage the Hereford team in the second half. Right, we'll be back here for the whole of the second half in just a short while, but I understand the players are coming out of Chesterfield for the start of the second half there, and Steve Miller. It's been a really good start in this one for Harriers. They just need to build on this now if they can. If they can nick a second goal, how priceless would three points be up there? I think three points will be absolutely priceless. Whether or not Harriers can get it as the second half, 
gets underway. The Harriers uh, defending the goal away to our right. No changes in this second half, but they've got to stop Chesterfield coming back at them, which is uh, what happened at the uh, end of the first half. And at the moment, Harriers are going to have to work out uh, an ideal way to get behind the back two, who have uh, had no pressure on the ball at the moment. But uh, Harriers, through Hemmings and Morgan Smith, have those opportunities to get there on Ryan Booth. We're into the second half, played 30 seconds of it. It is Chesterfield 1, Kidderminster Harriers 1. Full commentary on that second half then on 104 and 104.6 FM and DAB, as well as online. Matt Paddock is alongside Steve Miller. Here at Edgar Street, players just emerging then for the second half. Hereford, as we've said, playing down the slope towards the meadow end in that second half, which is where they like to be. It's a bit like at Lucktonians when Dave Thomas says they're playing towards the beer in the second half. Well, there's no bar at that end, as far as I'm aware, uh, at the meadow end. But case generally, Hereford do prefer going down the slope in the second period. Yeah, I've, I've talked to so many goalkeepers across the seasons as well, and they say it, 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 it is a difficult even to take kick, goal kicks on occasions, uh, certainly from your hands. If if there's any wind, any blustery uh, conditions whatsoever, uh, they find it difficult. And the momentum, given that the Blackfriars Street end remains completely closed, uh, there's nobody in two parts of the ground, given that the Buxton 30, let's call them that, are up in the top left in the seats. So there's no noise coming in from two sides of this ground, but you can bet there'll be a lot of noise from the meadow end. Final point just before we start the second half. Jake Wright now is walking a bit of a tightrope, isn't he? Not only is he on a booking, he's also very much on the referee's radar because he's spoken to him aside from the booking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, a couple of, I call it dark arts along the way, a bit of theatrics uh, to boot. So, as you say, he's a very, very fine line. Many managers would probably have taken him off at half-time. Maybe Avon Livingston, former... Hereford Clare could have been introduced, but it's as you were as we're underway for the second half. So no changes at half time. Ball with Buxton midway inside the Hereford half. Max Brogan, the midfield player, trying to get a little turn going. Here's Hunt, crossfield into the centre circle. Captain Luke Shields for Buxton. Spreading play to the far side. Motley Henry challenging again on the far side with Hudson, but that'll be a Buxton throw in. So Buxton still with three defenders, that's Hunt, Granite and Shields. Midfield of the two flank players are Etaluku and Motley Hendry. Then McCourt and Brogan in the centre. Up top is Jake Wright, Gigi Rilami and Ben Adrucci. Ball into the Buxton half. And I think it's gone out of play, he has indeed. Referee's given Hereford a throw in on the halfway line. Skinner is told to wait for a moment by the referee. What the referee's waiting for, I know not. But now he's told Hereford they can take the throw in. Skinner with it. Towards Phillips, beaten in the air as he's headed back towards the halfway line. Darth with an attempt to challenge, ball over the top for the on rushing Andrucci, but he can't control it. The Bolton Loney, and it's gone behind for a Hereford goal kick. So no change to the Hereford setup. 1-0 if you're just joining us after half-time. Smash and grab goal at DJ Rilami, giving Buxton the lead in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Hereford with ponding goal. Skinner, Hankins, Cameron and Hudson at the back as the ball is launched into the Buxton goal, into the uh, penalty area and the goalkeeper Petrovic has grabbed it. Midfield trio of Baybar staff on his debut. And Lydon, Akeki and Obidei, the Hereford width down the left and right flanks with Kieran Phillips, the out and out Hereford striker. But plenty of options for Paul Caddis on the bench. But Ben Goddard, Hereford will need to turn this around. Yeah, they'll need a goal pretty early as well because I think Buxton will implement their time wasting tactics, well, gamesmanship or time wasting tactics, whatever you want to call it, but they'll they'll be using their all the dark arts to, to, to see this one out. Hereford attack, ball up to Babos, edge of the area, he's drinking through. He can't stab the ball to Phillips. And it's all gone horribly wrong from a Hereford perspective. Somehow that defence opened up. But the ball has drifted through to goalkeeper Petrovic. 
and the chance went for Babos, who was in the clear for a split second. He was completely unmarked to start with. Then Buxton just failed to pick him up. He wasn't offside, he was onside, and then he just hesitated on the ball. He didn't surge towards goal, he just waited. I don't know what he was waiting for, but well, the chance think, was gone. I think he was trying to find Phillips, who was to his left, and in the end it, he got crowded out, and the ball just simply deflected into the arms of Petrovic, so it's still... Hereford nil, Buxton one here, three minutes into the second half. Long ball for Buxton into the box. And Pond has it. Now, Jake Wright has gone to ground yet again. It's, it, it's almost like a William Shakespeare play, this, clever. You know, it's... Uh, well, as long as all's well, that ends well, Keith. That's I'm on stage, here we are. <laughs> You're getting more Meldrewish in your <laughs> old age, you know, I, mean. I don't believe it. <laughs> Pond takes the free kick. Good ball, actually, to the Keki. Keki juggling with the ball, finds Skinner. Lydon back to Skinner, down the Hereford right. Ball on the deck to Alex Babos. Babos is allowed to turn. Facing goal now, cross deep. Will it come down here for Obadei? It will. Inside the box, Obadei low in. Flips with another one of those attempted back heels. And smashed out of play for Hereford attacking throw in down the left. Hudson goes across to pick it up as quickly as he can. Obadei on the turn. Back with Hudson, 10 yards from the corner flag. Back in now for Obadei. Obidei obstructed there, but ball into the path of Motley Henry. It's come off him for a Hereford throw in. It's a bit of early pressure at the start of this second half. Hudson with the ball in his hands. Still bright sunshine now. As Hudson takes the throw in. It's off the head of Obidei, but not real great direction and it's dropped for Motley Henry and he's given it back to Hudson Hudson's cross headed out by Max Hunt and away come Buxton on the counter attack a bit of pace into the Hereford half Andrici ball inside for Girolami up to the edge of the penalty area on the right hand side cross coming over Andrici edge of the box Hereford try and put a block in diagonal ball to the near side great tackle by Jid Akeki, and that's going to be an attacking throw right by the corner flag for Buxton. Good sliding challenge there, Ben. He's shown experience beyond his years, hasn't he, Jid Akeki? He's still only a teenager to come into sort of a playoff fighting team at this level and, and show the experience he has. He's done very well. Well, with Buxton, though, by the corner flag, stretching it back a little back for Max Brogan. Brogan with a right footed cross to the far post. It's over everybody including Jake Wright, who this time doesn't fall to the ground, and it's going to be a goal kick. Six and a half minutes gone, second half. Buxton still with the advantage here on BBC, Hereford and Worcester. Williams, that's Andy Williams for Hereford, warming up down below us. So maybe he's going to come into the fray shortly as Hankins leaves the ball for Cameron. At the back, now Skinner, the one-two with Lydon. Skinner up towards Phillips. Challenged by Granite at the back, no fouls as the referee as Buxton have possession. Down this near side. Foul by Skinner, right in front of the commentary position here at Edgar Street on Sean Etaluku. As you were saying, Trevor, he looks as though he's got bags of pace. It's whether he can get clear to stretch out a little bit. He was he was clearly fouled by Skinner to prevent him doing so there. The assistant called the referee over and he's booked for time wasting. He just shields the captain. Yeah, I think the ball came to him and he kicked it in the opposite direction to waste more time. The the linesman spotted it and called the referee over and he's he's gone in the book. That's three, I make it, in the book now. It's actually Josh Granite. That's the fourth 
fourth Buxton oh, player, yeah. Granite, McCourt, Girolami and Wright. But it is, after all of that, a Buxton free kick, 25 yards out. McCourt should sweep it in with the right foot. A little bit of an in-swinging one. Hereford with a high defensive line on the edge of the box. Eight minutes into the second half. McCourt then with it, low, towards the near post. Back with McCourt, and that's going to go out for throw in. A pretty woeful shot. And that's a Hereford defensive throw. But Buxton have the lead. They have it. Girolami pouncing. Smart shot on the turn, giving the Bucks a 1-0 lead just before half-time. Always so sad, isn't it? Whenever that happens, I mean, the shot drifts out for a throw, and everybody always thinks of Jeff Thomas. Do you remember, he was a fine, fine footballer. He did it once for England, I seem to remember, in international. Always comes out of the woodwork when that happens. Ball's come off Phillips, so it'll be a Buxton throw. Nine minutes into the second half already. Hereford's bench is Teixeira, Cissé, Cowley, Williams and Rooney. Here come Buxton into the penalty box, blocked though by Darth. Running away with it, midway inside his own half, helped out by Hudson. Hudson lifts it down the Hereford left. Won't drop for Robert A. Phillips has been kept very quiet up there, so I think that might be the change. <laughs> As Pong slams the ball into the face of Jake Wright. Who now goes to ground? What a surprise! I was just about to say, the irony being that was the one occasion he didn't go to ground, he did get it full in the face from Curtis Pond, to be fair. <laughs> Nathan Cameron can't believe it that he's fallen down. This is just... well... The referee's having none of it, is he? If Charlie Chaplin did that in the 1920s, he'd probably win an Oscar for it. <laughs> I've never noticed it, it from so, Jay Wright before. It's so this. delayed, isn't it? So, oh, it's hit my face. Oh, I better go down. Deary me. Touch of the panto villain, as you said in the first half, really. Hereford throw after that. Up towards the halfway line. Phillips picks it on. Davis unable to collect it. And it's swept forward for Buxton. Hankins under a bit of pressure. Wright goes down again. No flat. No free kick. Wide net to a Keki, but it's overhit. So that'll be a Hereford, uh, sorry, a Buxton throw in midway inside their own half. I think Craig Ali Elliott, the Buxton manager, is getting very animated now. He was claiming that Jay Wright was having his shirt tugged. Throw in Buxton, midway inside their own half. Finally taken, headed forward by Etaluku. Swept back by Leiden. That was too close to Petrovic, the Bucks keeper. He was able to pick it up midway inside his own penalty box. We've had 11 minutes then of the second half. I doubt the ball's been in play for 11 minutes of the second half, Ben, but we shall see how many added minutes there are at the end. Hereford may need every single split second in this game. It's now Chorley 2 Bly Spartans 0 and Brackley are beating Tamworth 3-0. Hereford attack, Skinner down the right hand side, Akeki with a bit of space to take on. His marker down the right hand side, he's still going out to be a corner. He's been a real bright spark for me, Akeki. Loves to take players on, I hope that's not coaching out of him in any way. But he's won Hereford a corner. On the Hereford right. Bodies congregate towards the penalty spot. Hawkins comes in late. Here's the corner. Near post is headed there by Hawkins across the face. Still with Hudson. He's beaten his man. Gets to the byline. Dinks it in. It's headed out from the near post though. And then unceremoniously thumped into the Hereford half. Skinner's got work to do. Girolami pulls him back by the shoulder and that's a free kick which Curtis Pond wants to come out and take. I also think Keith has been an impressive debut by Luke Lawson Darth so far. He hasn't, certainly hasn't looked out of place. <laughs> Famous last words. As soon as you did that, he yeah. gave the ball away. <laughs> but <laughs> broadly speaking, yes, he Yes, absolutely. Uh, he's, he is that... We were talking about it before kick-off, weren't we, Ben, that Hereford needed that sort of 
enforcing midfield presence. They haven't really had it apart from Tom Pugh when he came here for a temporary spell. I think you notice it away from home more. A keki to Babos. Babos three yards out. Little shimmy. Sweeping ball out now to Hudson. Hereford have got bodies forward here in the box. It's Obide taking on his marker. Nutmeg goes down just outside the box. It'll be a free kick, almost a short corner. A yard later, that would have been a penalty. But it's a free kick. Up comes Cameron. And at walking pace, here comes Kyle Hankins. So plenty of aerial threats from Hereford. Phillips is at the near post. Darth just waits outside the box in case there's a half clearance. Good crowd noise, encouraging Hereford here to get back on level terms somehow. Now Jewel Arm has been called back. But it's Babos's free kick and he's headed in. Who's it? No! I thought it was in from Cameron. It's just wider the mark. It's a goal kick. Goodness me, how close was that then? It kind of looped in the air for ages and you just thought it was going to hit the back of the net, but it didn't. It just looped, looped wide of the post. I think everybody was just watching the ball. Nobody could do anything about it. Did it come off his shoulder or something? It, it appeared to come at a funny angle. Yeah. But uh, behind it went. It's a goal kick. Which Petrovic takes now. Right-footed into the Hereford half. Hankins battling away with Girolami. It's right. Now Andrucci, Andrucci into the area. Offside flag though against Max Brogan, who'd broken clear, but he had strayed a little bit too far. That's the threat personified there from Buxton. Brogan did find himself in an advanced position, but he was offside. Skinner for Hereford. Halfway line is a Keki. Short ball to Darth. Darth back to Akeki, he's in the centre circle. Now Hudson, option down the line is Obade. Here is Obade, controlling the ball, trying to turn his man. Far side of the field, it's Luke Shields, the captain. Dragging it back though is Obade, and he wins the throw in. Taken quickly to Alex Babos. Babos into the area! Oh, he got it behind Phillips! Cut the ball back perfectly, but it was behind the on-rushing Phillips. Chance has gone. Hereford on the front foot here. Lydon's tripped up. Lydon takes the free kick. And the referee says you cannot take the free kick until I'm ready. And whatever Phillips and Lydon say to the referee, Ashley Clark, he's not going to change his mind. Rolling ball, he said, wasn't it? I think. But it's much better from Hereford the last five, six, seven minutes. They need this to get the crowd up, as we were talking about. That extra encouragement might get an extra five or ten percent out of the players. Alex Bagos with the free kick. Hereford players line up on the edge. Hudson's joining in late. It's a Bagos free kick swept in. Cameron heads it back across the box. There's Jake Wright to get it partially clear. It's come off the boot of Bagos and Etaluku shields it well for. Buxton in the left back position gets Buxton moving then into the centre circle. Jake Wright is offside. That's a Hereford free kick. Noticeably, Hudson didn't touch Wright there because he knew what, there would have been an, another minute delay. Now he can take the free kick. Here's Skinner. Very advanced Skinner up to the edge of the area now for Phillips. Back with Skinner. Turning inside, looking for options. Here's Lawson Darth. Darth running diagonally across the pitch. Cameron's joining in as every outfield player for Buxton's back behind the ball. Hawkins now. Hereford trying to play passing football, but they need to get somebody on the end of it. Here's Babos. Little dribble into Leiden. Leiden's cross, partially blocked. Still with Hereford though. Akeki. Keki head down working his way across field left foot shot and that's poor didn't really get the curl on it he was looking for and that's going to be a goal kick they look great when they fly in the top corner don't they but um, there were better options there I think but it has been much better from Hereford now I'm wondering if uh, yeah we're looking at potential changes down here I, yeah, think. I think fresh legs might be an option 
goal kick. Craig still encouraging Hereford. Paul Caddis is out in the six shot in the technical area, trying to get referee's attention perhaps. But no substitution yet. Goal kick up to the halfway line. Helped on by Jake Wright, but straight into the path of Hereford's left back, Lewis Hudson. He's been a good sign, I think, from Russia Olympic. Down the left hand side for Obaday. Taking on Motley Henry, left footed cross, partially cleared, only as far as Hudson. Hereford trying to pin Buxton back here a little bit. Obaday to Hudson, still down that far flank, and it's swept up in the air into the Hereford half. And Hankins has got the freedom of Herefordshire here to bring it down. The urgency, I heard a cry from someone in the Merton seats. As Pond lifts it, it's come off a defender. That'll be an attacking throw for Hereford down this right-hand touchline. Skinner short to Lydon, back with Aaron Skinner. Phillips for the first time layoff. A keki now. Plenty of possession for Hereford here. Phillips wins the corner. Off Max Brogan. He's and busy for now to make a change. He's busy, Phillips, to be fair. He's, uh, he may well be replaced now, but I think he's had a. And maybe he's not been replaced. No. Lydon, who's coming on. Yeah. And Andy Williams on. Going two up top. That's very sensible when you're trading at this stage. And again, they've got to win. Does it surprise you in any way, Keith, that it's Williams coming on rather than Cowley? I think Cowley's coming on as well. Oh, yeah, double substitution. Phillips is coming on. I think Phillips has worked really hard up front. Um, he was so unlucky that he could easily go on target when the ball was pulled back behind him by Babos. Babos did everything right, then pulled the ball in behind. So Hereford going in the front two now of Cowley and Williams. Buxton are trying to defend this corner on the Hereford right. Swept in by Babos. Hereford players attack it. It'll be another corner. I think Josh Granite powering it out. He's trying to encourage his fellow defenders to stay focused on this. This is another Hereford corner. This time Babos with his arm raised. Ball towards the far post this time. Headed just over the bar by Cameron. He got there ahead of the defenders but couldn't keep his header down. And it's what? A yard over the top goal kick. Knocking on the door, Hereford. They keep asking all the questions, don't they? They've still got another 25 minutes left in this one to, to get an equaliser or maybe the winner. So I think they're doing the right things. You can't fault the work rate. You can't fault the effort. But I've said in the first half, Keith, you've got to score any good spells. Yeah, absolutely. 25 minutes to go. Hereford still a goal down as Buxton attack, but it's gone out of play before Etaluku can get there. And so it's a substitution for Buxton by the looks of it. Could be a double change made by Craig Elliott, in fact. So Duralam is coming off. One of the substitutes is uh, Owen McEwen is about to come on. Just one change made so far. Caddis is saying, well, this is time wasting. So Connor Kirby is on. And it's uh, Jake Wright, who's uh, public enemy number one, who's coming off. And it is Owen McEwen on as his replacement. So that negates the possibility of a red card for Jake Wright, which may well have arisen, we'll never know. So a defensive throw in for Buxton. As the crowd go quiet following those changes. Midway point of the second half. Hereford nil, Buxton one. I wonder how many reds Jake Wright's got in his career. You wonder if he's one of them players who just knows the lo the line to, to rule with referees. Well, he's gone very, very close to it this afternoon. <laughs> but Buxton have it, halfway line, sliding tackle from Cameron. Ball out, throw in then right underneath the clock on the Len Western side of the ground. 
no sign yet of Adam Livingston coming on, the former Hereford player, of course. He is an option down the left for the Bucks. I think he was better at attacking than he was at defending, so I don't think I don't think you'll, you'll see him this afternoon. I think that may be one of the reasons why Craig Elliott changed things so much from uh, the match against Chester. Six changes for Buxton ahead of kickoff today. Livingston, Kirby, and Ackroyd dropped to the bench. In came uh, Granite, Motley Henry, McCourt, Brogan, and Girolami. Ball with the Hereford keeper to my left. Curtis Pond. Pond looking for the aerial route of Williams. Williams on to Cowley. Edge of the penalty area. Cowley getting on to his right foot. A late offside flag's gone up against Jason Cowley. And that will quiet the crowd down. Who's in attendance today? 3,004. So 39 Buxton fans are enjoying the scoreline at the moment inside the 3,000 and for attendance who are still going to try and urge Hereford on in the final quarter of the match here's Haukins oh Haukins has scored out goal here he's killed it Haukins has got too much space on the ball he could have left it for Pond and he's just simply side footed the ball into the corner there was enough power on the pass to trickle into the back of the net and has that killed Hereford's playoff aspirations for the season? A totally and utterly meaningless back pass did need to do it. Hereford 2 0 down, Trevor. Well, yeah, I mean, that is a total disaster with a breakdown in communication. Ben made the point in the first half that just occasionally Hereford get asleep at the back or it's not quite the uh, communication levels, aren't there? They've got to go for it now. They've absolutely got to go for this because. Yeah, lose this, they're as good as out the playoff race, you would think. Oh, it's a shocker, though, isn't it? Well, I can't believe that the, the communication fell apart. They were only three, four yards away from each other. Unbelievable. When you're going for crucial goals in crucial moments in games, and, and then that happens, it's just, yeah, you can't write that. So Hereford need to find not, not just... Two goals at three, you'd have thought, really. Cowley with a challenge of a day. Working his way across field. Into the path of Williams, but again, he couldn't stretch to it. He's offside anyway. He's offside. But this will be a monumental turnaround. You just feel that Buxton now. Smash and grab goal, fair enough, at the end of the first half when you get an absolute gift totally and utterly unnecessary in fact I, I feel that Hawkins could have just left the ball to roll there was no pressure on Hawkins was there to, to Pond he didn't need to touch it he didn't need to touch it certainly didn't think it was Pond's fault at all no I mean, Pond's probably screaming for the ball I think Pond probably wanted him to leave it it's a question of you know getting down and picking the ball up perhaps anyway Hereford 2-0 down Darth to Hudson, Hudson with a cross into Williams, Williams heads it back across the penalty area and Cameron's gone up, winning a corner under 20 minutes left here at Edgar Street goal back now would set it up <laughs> with a grandstand finish well you never know, but they need one now is they, what I mean you can't yeah they certainly do I mean that has, well the crowd have just absolutely gone silent Babos corner, far post, headed, saved by What's the keeper What's a save? Cowley. It's Cowley's had a reaction it's save by the goalkeeper. It's not gone over, it's a throw in. I think he's given a corner, Keith. I think it, he might, he seemed to indicate a corner. What a header that was, a terrific save as well, to be fair to the goalkeeper. Very, very good save. Point bank save, Hereford corner this time on the left. Babos with it, did some inning, swinging, curling on here. Obidei still in the box, drifting just out of it now on the right-hand side, attacks the penalty area. Movement from Darth, Obidei tried to sweep it across, partially blocked and that'll be a Hereford attacking throw in. Level the area, taken smartly into the path of a Keki. Keki weaving his way across field, 
needs options now. Ball on the deck. Haukins, right foot shot wide. Perhaps trying to make amends for the error a minute ago, but he hasn't hit the ball on target. And it is another goal kick, Buxton. He needs to make amends, doesn't he, Haukins? He's quite out to see goal uh, play give concede an own goal at one end and try and score at the other to make amends for himself but Hereford shooting themselves in the foot completely as you say a little bit of lack of focus at the end of that first half and that is a shocking own goal to give away but Hereford still with 17 minutes plus added time to go one of the other games we're following is now Wantage Town 2, Worcester City 2, and Wantage has just had a penalty saved as well, so it's not going according to the script there. Cameron's gone up at the far post. Babos with the free kick. Everybody back behind the ball for Buxton. Floated in by Babos. Headed partially out. Darth kept it high. Haukins back to Darth. And now Obadei. A couple of yards in from the left-hand touchline, taking on his marker, driving in, driving in across, and... Williams is there, but the keeper has grabbed it right in front of Williams and has smothered it completely. It's still Hereford nil, Buxton too. About what? Uh, how long to go, Keith? 15? 16 minutes 16. on my watch. Plus, there'll be quite a bit of added time, but as you say, you need one as early as you can. If you're Hereford here, Buxton are quite happy with a 2 0 advantage now. There's Babos, lovely pass. Here's a Keki up to the right hand side of the penalty area now. Low cross in, super defending there. Sweeps it out by Max Hunt at the expense of a corner. Cowley absolutely doing his fruit in the middle there with uh, Obaday. Uh, with Obaday, you thought the uh, uh, Keki, sorry, you thought the, the ball should have been crossed higher because he was steaming in the middle with uh, Cowley. Another corner, Babos with it. This time it's a near post effort, smashed away. That'll go out for a throw in. Few things in football annoy me more than not beating the first defender from a corner. Skinner, throw in. For Hereford into the box, Williams has got a yard. He brings it down here and it's smashed away. That'll be another attacking throw. I'm going I'm to give Buxton a lot of credit for their defending today. Still into the mix, thumped out, only as far as Akeki, turning on the left wing, advancing forward now, he's got Cowley down the touchline, holds the ball up, now it is with Cowley, Cowley steams forward, he's got Skinner available, here's Aaron Skinner, midway inside the Buxton half as Skinner switches play, out to the left flank now for Hereford. Clock ticking down, quarter of an hour to go. A Keki in to Cowley. Cowley's in the box, back to goal though. Trying to turn his man, right footed shot, weak. Blocked. Ains recovered there by Babos temporarily and good work by McEwen to power away with the ball. He's going all the way up the other end. McEwen, low cross in, blocked by Darth. Good block from Darth as there is a player over for Buxton on the counter. Hereford have recovered possession. Lydon, ambitious ball across. Here's Williams, and Williams has scored! Hereford's back in the match for 14 minutes to go. Andy Williams anticipated the partial back pass into the box. He whipped onto it with the right foot, slid the ball home past Petrovic, who was stranded. It's Hereford 1, Buxton 2. Perfect timing, set up a grandstand finish now. A goal back for Hereford. I think that they, they deserve that goal back, I think. The real Edgar Street will be um, fully behind them now. So Williams has given Hereford a, a lifeline. That's woken the crowd up, most certainly. Split second earlier, I saw McEwen absolutely motoring forward. And if Buxton had scored a third there, well, that would have been absolutely the death knell. The Hereford attack now through Williams. Ten yards from the corner flag. A Keki now, taking on the defender. He's got Skinner on the overlap. He feeds the ball to Skinner. Skinner's cross in, headed eight. Anxious moments now for Buxton. The crowd have got belief again, Ben. 
They're, they're certainly uh, providing their excitement. Their money's worth today, Hereford. Keki, crossfield pass. Here's Hudson, 30 yards out. Goes for goal, but he's fired it over. And that'll be a goal kick for Buxton. Don't blame him for having a go there. There was It opened up in front of him, didn't it, really? But he just got underneath it. And uh... I might be encouraged to give Cissé 10 or 15 minutes. Cowley and Williams are the ones that have been used so far. Yeah, change coming here, I think. I think Whether it's Buxton, it's, it's though. Buxton, though, is it, rather than... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, Craig Elliott making the third and final change for Buxton this afternoon. After seeing a little bit of a momentum shift back the way of the balls with that Andy Williams effort. Did well to coolly turn and almost pass the ball into the back of the net. And it is Cissé coming on for Hereford at the expense of Hudson. So that's a bit of a gamble, but Hereford 2-1 down. Got to go for it, haven't they? They have to go and try and find another way through. I haven't yet seen the Buxton change. Perhaps they're rethinking it with the introduction of Cissé. So I don't think Buxton have made their third and final change as Babos gets Hereford moving forward. Here's Obadei. Tried to nutmeg a defender and didn't get away with it. Ball slammed up into the Hereford half. Plenty of time for Cameron. Cameron to Pond, Hereford's goalkeeper. Right-footed. Tried to lift it to Williams. Buxton intercepted. Ball down the Bucks left. Broken on it. Edge of the penalty area. Here's Connor Kirby, back to Brogan. Brogan onto his right foot. A little bit of movement for Buxton, and that should go out of play, although Etaluku cuts it in. Foot in is enough from Skinner, and that'll be attacking throw in for Buxton. Darth back defending again. Just before um, for the uh, Williams goal, Darth made a vital interception to break up that Buxton counter-attack, didn't he? He's shouting a lot, Darth, which is interesting. Ball thrown in. Good block by Cameron. Akeki. Back to Darth, but he's lost out this time to Etaluku. So down the Buxton left. Kirby with a crossfield ball. And away goes Babos flying. He's intercepted it. He's still going. Head of the centre circle now. He's got Cissé, who's just come on down the left. Here's Cissé. He's going to attack the box. Onto his right foot. Goes for goal, but that's going to go out for a throw in. Such is the enthusiasm of Cissé, but he got his angles completely wrong. And it's a defensive throw for Buxton with 10 minutes plus added time to go. So Hereford with no further options. Cissé, Cowley and Williams have been introduced into the fray. Williams getting a goal back. But Hereford still 2-1 down here on BBC. Hereford and Muster. Will there be further drama here at Edgar Street? I wouldn't rule it out with some of the, the endings we've had to matches here, Ben, this season. It's been very entertaining, to say the least. It's good how, isn't it? There's little strikers all over the place. and Here is Cissé. It's attacking Motley Henry. He's going to drag it onto his right foot. Low cross in, and that's smashed clear by McCourt. Back to the halfway line, and Hankins has missed the time the header. And away he come uh, Buxton up to the edge of the area. Oh, it's a weak effort by McEwen. He's done all the right things to advance forward. But then really weak effort as Pond was able to pluck out of the air. Or straight up the other end is Obadei. Obadei now to Akeki. Blocked by attacker by Ataluki. Sweeps clear. Only as far as Dar. Tries to turn his man. He's lost out here as Hereford have gone a bit too ambitious perhaps encouraging Buxton to come forward on the counter here's McEwen stabbed ball to Connor Kirby in fact it's Elliot and that'll be a throw in let me just update you with the fact it's Chesterfield 1 kidding Mr Harriers 3 so um, what a win that would be and that departed too early at Chesterfield again. sorry again I said they haven't had a, had a party too much at Chesterfield a bit early, hmm. maybe. That would be a tremendous victory, given the circumstances. 
is Darth for Hereford. Eight minutes to go. Hereford won, Buxton two. Headed away by Shields, the Buxton captain, back in, deep into the Hereford half. Hankins is there, he's got Skinner in support. Skinner thought about driving it to the left, but instead it's towards Okeke. Good first touch from Zidakeke, 25 yards out. He wants a runner in the area, it's Williams. Williams cuts it back, six-yard box. Max Hunt does the necessary. Out of play for a hair of an attacking throw. A goal in the next couple of minutes would make it very interesting. Or as Barry Davids would say, very interesting, very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's 2-1 Buxton. Buxton have a counter. Here's Max Brogan down the right-hand side, hugging the right-hand touchline. Prods it forward. Here's Kirby. Slowing it down for Buxton in the Hereford half. Crossfield ball, but Oji Bay gets it back. Hereford attack now. Oji Bay oh. slides out, and that's a foul. Hereford free kick. And a card for Tommy Elliott. Williams was away then. Over day, just pondered on the ball, and Williams had already made his run. He plays through Williams, he was in on goal. Over day taking too long to pass and release the striker. So, free kick from the centre circle. We haven't seen much of Cowley yet, have we? Yeah. Now would be a good time. Five yellow cards then for Buxton. Elliot, the most recent recipient. And it's a Hereford free kick. Alex Babos, as the balls attack the meadow end, can they get an equaliser? Keep their hopes alive. Babos, floating it in. Up goes Williams, beaten in the air. And Cissé can't stride out there at the moment, or he has deflected it. And here's Skinner, 25 yards out, in towards Cowley. Williams tries to get in there with Cowley. Cowley to Hawkins, back with Cowley, 20 yards out. And that'll be a corner. No, goal kick comes off Cowley, who's very enthusiastic, but his head is down for much of the time. Just look at options too often. So, Skinner, sponsors man of the match. What do you think of that, Ben? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably go Okeke. I thought he's probably been the better of the, the full backs, the wing backs, I think. Um, but yeah, the. You could, there's several candidates probably. Skinner has been a driving force from that fullback role. But, uh, we shall see as Hereford attack again. Obaday. obaday has got Cowley to his right, Williams to his left. Gets dragged down, no fuss as the referee, Babos. Still jinking his way through. Babos up to the edge of the area. Hereford supporters want him to shoot, but he's crowded out. Is he pushed over? No. No free kick given. Buxton have it in their own half. And now a Buxton player's gone down holding his head, so the referee has stopped the game again. I think there was a foul there. But I don't think it's a head injury. Yeah, no, possibly not, but either way, it was going to be a free kick. Babos got a bit desperate when he couldn't find the initial pass, didn't he? And he kind of gave the ball away. Perhaps being too much of that today. They're keeping the ball underneath their feet, they're not getting shots away quickly enough. If Matt Healy in the PA box had any sense of humour at all, he just said, the man of the match today, as chosen by the sponsors, the sniper in the back of the stand. All <laughs> those Buxton players have been going there. Ooh, I think that would have been... <laughs> it would be very funny. Probably the, last, <laughs> probably the last announcement he ever did, but it would have been very funny. <laughs> now, I mean, you've, got to, you've, got to, to you've got to hand it to Buxton. They've yeah, been absolutely. thoroughly professional in what they've done. Having got that goal yeah. in stoppage time at the end of the first half, this is what they needed to do. And oh, but they have milked it. To but be given a, an absolute gift of a second, it probably should be 1-1 one, one at least. Here, but we, here, go, come here we go. Here we go. And now, midway inside the Hereford half, Brogan. Out to the right-hand side for McEwen. McEwen, who's looked decent since coming on, kept, kept, keeps the ball out on that far side. Ball in. Pond's made a bit of a meal of it, and it's saved by Pond recovering from a follow-up shot from Connor Kirby. What I do like about Buxton, although you know they've been defending all hands of the pumps at times at the back in this second half, when they break, there's about four of them going forward, they don't just have one guy going on his own, they do commit players forward when they break. I think that comes from playing on 4G. 
because yeah. you, need, you need to be a sprinter on 4G. That's an extra asset. It's, it's much harder to turn as a defender, but if you can front run, as it were, I think uh, Stuart Fleetwood might have been a good player on 4G. Corner for Buxton, straight into the arms of Hereford's keeper, Curtis Pond. Drives it up towards Williams, who turns his man. I don't think he's going to get there ahead of Granite. So the referee's dragged it back for a foul on Williams, which is a bit of a surprise to me. That's no, that was fair enough. He tried to see if there was an advantage and there wasn't one, so he's pulled it back for the free kick. That's perfectly fair, I would have thought. Keith doesn't agree. I, I thought Williams turned his man and didn't have the pace to get there, but there we go. Free kick it is. Two minutes to go, plus added time. Hereford 2 1 down that they need it. You'd probably take a point here now as Babos gets a free kick in. Punched by the goalkeeper. Out to Yusufu Siso. Let's it run out for a throw in. He needs movement. Darth provides it. Back with Siso. And he's quite happily running forward. Cissé still with it. Now inside to Obede, 25 yards out. Onto his left foot. Goes for goal, and that's the deflected corner. Still a chance for Hereford to retrieve something from this fixture. 2-2 two, two now in about six minutes injury time. That would make it extremely interesting, wouldn't it? One minute of normal time then to go. It's going to be an Alex Babos corner on the Hereford left here on BBC Hereford and Worcester. That would make a harem scare him end to the game. But Babos floats one in. But Obadei goes up, headed in the air by Cowley, but that'll be safely for a goal kick. Six minutes added time at Chesterfield, we're told, who lead three. Uh, Harriers lead three one there. So great to see that one out from a Kidderminster perspective. There aren't too many who would have much money on a three one away win at Chesterfield this afternoon. Well, I don't think I don't think they've beaten at home in 2024. No, Chesterfield. No. So phenomenal victory that will be. Here at Edgar Street, Petrovic takes the goal kick for Buxton. The Bucks are two one up. Minute left, Howkins to Cissé, headed forward by Babos, back to the left flank, there's going to be six, six minutes of added time. Well, you called it, Trevor. But it's Buxton on the counter. Hereford need to get players back behind the ball. Darth is the one who's raced back. Howkins by the corner flag. And it's been McCourt taking that towards the corner flag. Hereford need to get a block here. No foul. McCourt goes to the ground, no free kick given. Ball out, I think that's Brogan. Shot partially broken down. Here's Kirby, wide of the target. Hereford certainly gambling. They, I think they had three defenders back. Everybody else was up the other end of the pitch there. But you might as well lose 3 1 when you're trying to get, make it two each. Pond's kick deep. Skinner keeps Hereford moving. Here's Darth. I think he's had a good debut, actually. Promising debut up to Obadei. Two men on him there, and they pinch the ball. And all of a sudden, it's three against four. Buxton into the Hereford half. Left hand side here. I think Elliot was under instruction to hold it up. Here's McEwen. Just outside the box. Left hand side. We've had a minute of the six minutes of added time. Buxton try and fight for it, but there's Babos. Right back position, slams it forward. Williams is the player running forward. Keepers out with a header. Petrovic got there and he's headed it out for a throw in. He did he very well. There. He did really well, Petrovic there. Could Williams have gambled on that a little bit more? Obidei on the attack. Ten yards outside the box on the right. Akeki takes over. Hereford with three wingers on the pitch at the minute, which is strange. Obede, ball in, blocked again. Buxton doing just enough, doing their job. They're not panicking, and they're trying to play it out here, and they've got a counter going, and he's probably the quickest player on the pitch, but... Etaluku, a very heavy touch, and it's come through to Pond. That was a let-off as far as Hereford were concerned. We're still playing. Hereford 2-1 down, they're forced to the attacking throw in. Keki to Cameron. Cameron on the goal line. Back there for Keki. That's an attacking throw. Cameron goes to the near post. Will we get a skin along throw? 
It's a possibility, it's an option. We've had two and a half minutes of the six minutes of added time. Hereford 2-1 down. If they can retrieve something, they need to do it very, very quickly. Ball into the box. Heads go up. Cissé brings it down. Left-footed strike. Deflected. Shot by... Hereford have made it 2-2. And there's still three minutes to go. Williams from eight yards out. Left-footed shot. Beat Petrovic into the corner. Game on once again. Hereford 2. Buxton 2. Andy Williams with his second goal. Coming on as a substitute. Ben Goddard. Cissé's initial effort wasn't it and it just re- rebounded around the box before finding its way to Andy Williams who stabbed the ball home giving it over two minutes can they find the winner Hereford 2 Buxton 2 that might just give Hereford hope they will put pressure on that Banbury fixture on Wednesday but I don't think Hereford have given up the three points now here's Lawson Darth down the left hand side Obede has got his arms up in the air he wants possession here he is a Keki is free down the right flank here's a Keki a Keki attacking the box back with Obede he's got Darth with him Darth with a cross into the danger area headed out only as far as Skinner Skinner's going to leave it for Babos but intercepting is Elliot so away come Buxton now Hereford really gambling and the ball at the far side it's Motley Henry shot wide goal kick Hereford but this has to be Hereford's decision here they got to go for broke they're trying to win three points they've clawed a point back at this stage but they won all three and I don't think there's any change in the way Paul Caddis wants to decide to go about their business I think in the next two minutes he knows Hereford need the three points today really to give himself to give themselves any chance of, of, of getting back in this playoffs. Hereford 2, Buxton 2. Goalkeeper taking his time, bouncing the ball. Much to Caddis's displeasure down in the technical area. Cameron's having to go at the referee for it as well. But Petrovic puts the ball down and then kicks it into the Hereford half. Foul given away by Hawkins. Down went McEwen. Referee said that's a free kick. Crowd go quiet as Buxton are on the attack. They're trying to keep the ball in the Hereford half of the field. Kirby is giving it away though. Babos to counter. Babos now up to Obadei. It's four against four, five against five. Obadei turning his man. Now he sweeps it out to Akeki. Plays in the box. Akeki with the cross in. Headed up in the air. Danger still for Buxton. Obede, he thought about a half volley. He said it's Babos. Babos is cross. Headed it out again by Granite and Shields, who have done a very good job this afternoon. But it is 2 2. Buxton counter. Darts back there, snuffing out the danger. He's fouled. Free kick Hereford. They've got no time at all. They need to launch it, really. Curtis Pond is told to do just that. Pond down the middle. It's 2 2. Up goes Cameron. Here's Williams. Is it a half? It's just over. Oh dear me, how close was that? Williams on the hat trick. He lifted over the advancing Petrovic and it just went over the crossbar. What would a sensation that would have been if it dropped in, but it's still 2-2. It was a good flip by Cameron, wasn't it? Played it into, right into the path of Andy Williams. The ball always always heading over the bar there, wasn't it? He got a bit too much on his lobbed shot. Petrovic, goal kick, and this comes the final whistle. Hereford are going to have to be happy with salvaging a point after a game in which they were looking to be looking down the eyes of a defeat here at 2-0 to Buxton. But then came Andy Williams as a substitute. He scored two for Hereford in the second half late in the game, and maybe on another day that little shot at the end of the game would have drifted into the back of the net for a hat-trick in sensational circumstances but it didn't work out in the end but I think overall given the circumstances a point keeps Hereford in the hunt albeit a lot of pressure on the victory at Banbury on Wednesday yeah I think that's a very fair point um, we'll come back to you in just a tick because I know the final whistle has gone at Chesterfield so we'll head up there now on what I think 
has been a terrific day for Kidderminster Mr Harry and Steve Miller yes a final scoreline here Chesterfield 1 Kidderminster Mr Harry is 3 and after 54 games of not being beaten at the SMH Group Stadium league champions Chesterfield were torn apart by a Harriers side who used their guile to commit fully to the, the performance that Phil Brown wanted they took the lead after 5 minutes Ashley Hemmings crashing the ball in it took a deflection on its way past Ryan Boot to give Harriers the ideal start to the game Harriers did have to suffer a little bit of pressure around the half hour mark with goalkeeper Christian Dibble making a couple of fine saves but Chesterfield were on level terms when Harriers Matty Preston could turn uh, could only turn Bailey Hobson's right wing centre past his own goalkeeper as he attempted to clear Harriers though started the second up in brighter vein and really came at Chesterfield they netted early in the second half when Brown's shot was blocked initially by Boot but the ball came back and the young Harriers striker poked in the rebound to send the Harriers fans in the crowd of which there were 384 of them in this 8,337 crowd wild with delight and further delight was gained 10 minutes later Matty Preston smashing the ball in from close range in off the right hand upright with goalkeeper Ryan Boot beaten it set up an excellent performance from Harriers who battled away gamely to keep Chesterfield at bay three very very important points for Harriers in their bid to avoid relegation to National League North